Much of these stone walls and floors have weathered into dirt and dust, revealing the foundation. Much of the ceiling, too, has crumbled to the ground, layering in flecks and bits. Below me now is such tired soil. Tired, tired soil. <sighs> there isn't much to do here but burn dead leaves and wait. Watch the smoke rise, curl up fresh, and tickle the inside of your nose. Dull as bones it is. But what can I do? I'm stuck. Some might say cursed. I'd rather say bound. I don't like to think very much about it. I kneel to the small fire I've started, taking up a few embers and loam into my palm. It's this glow that stirs me and reminds me that my heart is still beating. I bring the scorched earth close to my face, shut my eyes, and breathe it in. I taste it and spit. It's barren. I'm probably going to wait here forever. What? There's an unnatural rustling not far off. West. West? I? What is it? Who? Another? Here? My eyes sharpen and my ears perk up. I feel my heart thumping into my throat. Should I be forward? Give a call? Would that work? Cry out. Plead. Help! Help, damsel! A fool sort of lie. Would that work? No. Go still. Listen. Just listen. Whatever it is, it's right busy about here. Noises tumbling rough from old doorways, chests wide open, shops and homes unexplored. A scavenger, then? Someone found this place. Hmm. Hearing these sounds is just... odd. It shouldn't be odd, but it is. Strange. I should remember such sounds. Oh? The noise is getting closer. Is it? Am I imagining this? N no, no. It's surely in the manor now, poking around the kitchen and... lounge? I decide, on the chance that it will find its way to the ballroom, to stand. I take a good posture and await this new company. And to my surprise, it, he, shows up at the door within the next minute. A boy? A man? What kind of thing is this again? He's carrying a pack and has a bottle on his waist. Maybe he's a traveler, then. Doesn't look like he's noticed me yet. He's just wandered in, stare adrift. After a few steps, I catch his eye. He moves a little closer to look me in the face, and then some more to see my feet. He stops there. He's staring, now, and doing nothing more. Come here. As if realizing some thing, he stiffens. His heart beats loud in the air. I need your help, so come on. Come here. He doesn't bend. What is he up to? What does he think this is? I speak again, this time with a little bite. The hell are you waiting for, tit? Oh, oh, have I been rude? Have I been rude? Oh, well, you are cordially invited to move your dumb legs. For the first conversational words I've spoken in centuries, they could have been worse. He shakes with fear and stands back. A fiend? Slow, are you? 
What does it matter? What are you pissing your trousers for? Get over here! Uh, no way! Yuli, my soul! I'll what? A smile cracks along my face. <laughs> your soul! Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my! When was it last that I laughed like this? I grin. I grin so brightly, watching, chuckling while he shrinks back a little and a little more. <laughs> now, person, person, you're just perfect. A jester. Won't you lend me an ear before I eat your soul? <laughs> At my laughter, he glares. Stealing himself, he answers me. You're not catching me, demon. Got that? I've read the stories. I'm tired, but I ain't stupid. Am I that famous? Mercy, I left a mark. You know what I mean! Hell, I really don't. Fiends, devils, demons, all of ya! I know how it is. And how is it? You're all foul, and you try to trick people! Trick you? Trick, trick. <laughs> oh. oh, I really just can't believe it. What's happened in the years I've been gone? And what if I'm not trying to trick you, person? What if I just want to hear you? Just want to hear me? What the hell? Like, what's it you read, lad? Do tell. I'd love to hear a story. I'm a little bored. I think I'll just leave. You'd turn tail on a bloodthirsty, wicked fiend? Look, I know something dirty when I see it. You ain't fooling no one. <laughs> He's so precious. All right, all right. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you. I, like all us fiends, devils, demons, am plainly trying to win your extravagant soul through my dastardly wit. Honest and true, I'm a rook. But please, please, at least tell me of what you've read. Why the hell do you want to listen to me so much? Because I am bored and your voice, oh, your voice. I swoon. Ugh, horse feathers. I really do want to listen. Would you be so kind? Ah, oh, he's genuinely considerate. Such a delight. I do want to hear him. In the meantime, I look him over a little more finely. He's got a fair face, but through the fabric of his shirt I can see that he's muscled. A surprise. Even the soldier boys seemed a bit lean back in the days I rode at Marley. I wonder what it is he does. He smells like an animal, in the most pleasant way that can be said. It's quite good. Also, he has the faintest scent of watercress about him, mingled with black oil. What a peculiar lad. Uh... Hmm? Really better not stick around. I guess I can tell you some things, though. Um, yeah, I guess I can tell you. Long as you stay put, you hear. What's keeping me from you is more powerful than I care to challenge, person. Yeah, right. Whatever. Here's a story. One from a book I read a lot when I was little. Oh, <laughs> pardon, pardon. I find it very hard to think of you any littler. Quiet. <laughs> there was a cobbler in Whitaker who had nothing to eat. He was poorer than dirt, he didn't have a girl, and it made him real sore. He didn't have a girl? A dame, a sweetheart. A... He didn't have a wife. 
Oh, continue. While he was walking down an alley, he met this man. He had a dark cloak on with a hood that covered his eyes, and the Kaba couldn't make heads or tails of it. He stopped, and he asked the cloaked man if he'd like his shoes worked on. The That's stupid. Why would he do that? Because he needed all the work he could get. Well, he should have gone around ruining shoes if what he needed was work. The cloaked man said he wasn't wearing shoes, but he could use a new pair. But obviously the cobbler's a cobbler, so he doesn't make shoes. He tells him that. And the cloaked man says, actually, I could really use some new shoes. The cobbler looks at him weird and says that he can get them if the guy's sick. And the cloaked man says, would you do that? I'd do something for you then. And the cobbler says, like what? And the cloaked man says, perhaps anything. He leans forward darkly as he says this. I smirk at the action. Now, I know what you're thinking. I've heard this one before and I know how it goes. Well, you don't. Because the cobbler says, perhaps not. And he walks away. How exciting. But here's the thing. While he's walking, he notices the alleys longer than usual. He doesn't think about it, though. Thinks he's just tired from work and keeps walking. But while he's walking, he sees another man in a cloak. He stops and asks if the man could use his shoes getting worked on. And the cloaked man says he doesn't have any shoes. The cobbler stops and looks at him and says that he better get moving. The cloaked man says he could really use some new shoes. And while he's moving, you know? I nod. He keeps running into this man in a cloak and he can't find the end of the alley. Actually, every time it takes longer and longer till he sees the man in the cloak, on the eighth time, he runs to the man. He stops and asks, what's the game? And the cloaked man looks at him with yellow eyes. Says he could really use some new shoes. For what, the cobbler says. I don't know, the cloaked man said. You know, perhaps anything. What do you want? The cobbler knows exactly what he wants. But fiends have yellow eyes. And he knows a fiend. Nonsense. I actually sighed hearing that. So, what you're telling me, if this story's anything good to adhere to, is that I might have already trapped you. Don't know. I don't think you did. Why not? He shrugs. I don't think you did. Hmm. I must say, your manner of storytelling is queer. What? It's strange. Oh. I don't know. It's just very strange to my ears. I guess. How is your story end? The cobbler gets desperate enough and makes a pact with the fiend to get new shoes by the next day. The fiend will give him gold for him to do that. So the fiend gives him the gold, but he doesn't make it. The fiend traps him in the alley so he can't leave. His soul is taken and he's damned. The fiend eats his soul and leaves the alley for a farm. A farm? Yeah, I know. I snort. That's comedy. I think it's supposed to mean something, but... Eh. The point is, don't get caught up with fiends no matter what. You're getting caught up with a fiend right now. Well, you don't feel right. I what? He shakes his head. Nothing. I look at him and try to figure him out. Figure out his opinions and his story. In the time he's told it, he seems to have taken another idea of me. I'm not sure why that is, either. I appreciate you telling me that story. 
Don't mention it. <laughs> so opaque. You still wary of me? Yeah, a little. I frown. Well. Do you want me to tell you another story? The unsolicited offer throws me. Is he really asking? But no. If I'm too... eager, I can't ask for that. No. I pause. No, I'm fine. If you say so. I'm gonna go now. Go? Yeah. I have to go, so I'm going. Uh. He begins to turn around. Uh. Stay. Please stay. Uh, please. I won't take your soul. Honest, I won't. And then, like an idiot, I move my hand out, reaching for him with singular wanting. I move past the second meter, past the circle's edge with my fingers, and withdraw with a start as they're set afire. Dropping to my knees, I scream. I cry out and howl, clutching the flames and smothering them. Tears crawl down my face and I snarl with pain. I shut my eyes and moan. I hear him step a bit closer. You're stuck there? <laughs> <laughs>